Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing a garden to table type of video where I go out and harvest the ingredients that I'm going to be cooking with for dinner tonight. Today I'm going to be doing a stuffed pepper recipe and these peppers are going to be stuffed with a fish paste. I'm gonna pan fry those and it's gonna have like a Chinese gravy over it. So I'm gonna go over the fish paste part of the recipe later on, but for now I'm gonna go pick some peppers. All right, so we're in the pepper row now and what I like to do is pick a mix of peppers with different spice levels because we do like to have some spicy peppers but you can't really have a whole meal of spicy peppers at least for us because they're just too spicy so i like to mix in some sweet peppers as well so i will likely pick some of these like bell peppers and I have a couple other sweet pepper varieties as well then i'm going to pick some of my korean chili peppers and I like to pick them when they're green just because I like the flavor of like the green pepper but you can definitely use it red if you prefer and I have been really liking the hot wax peppers for this type of meal but I don't really have any that are ready right now they're kind of still green and haven't turned yellow yet so I think I'm gonna have to skip these ones this time which is unfortunate because I think these are my favorite to use for this recipe. They're just like the perfect level of mild spice. So since I don't have any of those, um, I think I'll try some of these jalapeno peppers. Hopefully they're not too spicy. I have a few that also are turning red. So yeah, I'll pick a few of those and we'll try them. Hopefully they're not too bad. And then I have my Ichbarski peppers over here that are also a sweet pepper. And I think I'm gonna go for these first maybe over the bell peppers because the shape makes them really nice for stuffing so i definitely have some good peppers here and i don't really have to worry about leaving any peppers to ripen on the plants because i actually saw in our forecast i think we're going to get our first frost early next week so this is going to be our last week for picking peppers we're going to do our big pre-frost harvest this weekend so yeah, I don't have to be shy about picking anything today because it's all going to be coming off the plant sooner rather than later. I decided to pick a poblano pepper in place of my hot wax peppers since these are supposed to have a little bit of spice. I think the size and shape will also be really good for this. Okay, so now that I have the peppers all picked, the second part of the recipe is going to be the fish paste. And this can be an ingredient that's really hard to find in the store. You'll probably only get it if you live around like a really well-stocked Chinese or Asian grocery store. I don't have anything like that around, but I learned that it's really easy to make by yourself at home. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. And I'll show you that process because I'm going to assume that most people will not be able to find this. And all you need basically is some white fish and then we're gonna mix in some sea 
seasonings and some arrowroot starch in the food processor. And if you've never had fish paste before, maybe you've had like Chinese fish balls. So the fish paste has a very similar texture to that. It's kind of like a springy bouncy texture. And in order to create that texture, you have to either chop it by hand for a really long time, but an easy way to do it is just to blend it in the food processor, which is what I'm going to be doing. So yeah, I'm gonna go inside and show you how to make that fish paste. We're gonna cut up these peppers that I just harvested and I'll show you how the dinner comes together. I'm starting off with one pound of white fish. The variety doesn't really matter here. You can use pollock, tilapia, flounder. I'm using swai here, but I wouldn't recommend that because I actually did some research after I bought this package and apparently it's not always raised in very sanitary environments. So just any other white fish that you want or have access to. And this was previously frozen white fish. And what I did was I defrosted it in the fridge overnight and the center of the fish is actually still frozen and this is how I like to blend it because as you run your food processor the motor usually heats up whatever you're blending so having things kind of frozen helps to keep everything really nice and chilled so you don't have to worry about it overheating and to add to my one pound of white fish I am also going to be adding one teaspoon of salt to season I'm also going to add half a teaspoon of ground white pepper then I'm going to add one egg white and lastly, I'm going to add three tablespoons of arrowroot starch. If you can't find arrowroot starch, I think you can also use tapioca starch or possibly corn starch. Um, but I think the most traditional way is to use arrowroot starch. And by the way, I will link the website where I found this recipe in the description box if you want to take a look at that. But that's basically all the ingredients. It's really simple and all you have to do now is to just blend it in the food processor and you definitely don't have to worry about over blending. The point is to process it for a good amount of time because the more you process it, the closer you'll get to that springy bouncy texture that we're looking for. So this will take a few minutes in the food processor and it should be a nice homogenous mush. This possibly doesn't look that appetizing if you haven't seen fish paste before, but I know the final result once you cook it, so it doesn't bother me that it just looks like a weird pink mush because I know it's gonna be delicious in the end. So anyway, this is what it looks like after it's done blending. It's nice and smooth. And as I'm removing this from the food processor to put it in a container, you can kind of see how it's very bouncy and it should be stretchy as well. So it's kind of like jiggling in my container here and that's definitely what you want because this is gonna give you a nice bouncy texture once you go to cook it. So now that my fish paste is all done, I can prepare the peppers that I just picked from the garden. And all I'm going to do is create some nice vessels to stuff my fish paste with. So for a lot of my peppers, I am going to cut them either in halves or in thirds for the larger sweet ones. And I'm just removing the seed cavities. And there's no like specific way to do this. It will really depend on the size and shape of your peppers. So just do whatever you need to do to have a nice, cavity to be able to fill but also have it be relatively flat so that we'll be able to pan fry both sides of the pepper and i made sure to cut all of my sweet peppers first because once i move on to the spicier peppers i put a glove on because this is going to make it a lot easier for me to prepare the peppers without having to worry about any of the chili pepper oils getting into my skin and irritating me so once i move on to the spicy peppers especially when i get to these little ones the glove makes it a lot easier to get in there and take all of the seeds out. For the smallest skinny peppers, my Korean chili peppers, instead of cutting them in half, I'm just going to cut through one side and open it up and try and keep the peppers pretty whole. And I'll use a gloved finger to scoop out all of the insides of the pepper. This will make it so that it's not quite so spicy and of course also make space for us to stuff it with the fish paste. So I just take my thumb and scoop all of the insides out. And you can see how I still pretty much have like a whole intact pepper. That way you're not working with like really small tiny pieces and you still have space inside these peppers to stuff since they are a pretty thin pepper. It's nice to keep them as whole as possible. For my jalapenos, I am cutting those in half. They are a little bit on the small side, but they're also a thicker pepper, so they're not as easy to manipulate as my other hot peppers. 
So I just cut these in half and I treat them kind of like a smaller version of my sweeter peppers. Once all of my peppers are prepared, I can go ahead and start stuffing them with the fish paste. So I just take a butter knife and start stuffing the cavities of the peppers. You don't have to try and overstuff them or anything, just whatever is a nice comfortable amount for each pepper. And since I'm using lots of different kinds of peppers, they will kind of like cook at different rates and they're all different sizes and thicknesses, but that's totally fine. Just fill them with however much fish paste is going to fit in them. You can also use this method for different types of vegetables. One of my other favorite like dim sum dishes is basically this exact thing, but instead of stuffing peppers, you stuff eggplant. And I'll put a picture up on screen because it's kind of hard to describe, but basically you have like a piece of eggplant that you cut a little gap in and you stuff the fish paste into this slit in the eggplant and then you pan fry it and you cover it with the same type of sauce that we're doing today. and. That is probably one of my favorite dishes ever. So that's another option for using this fish paste. And you can also use it to make fish balls if you have any leftovers. And I am planning to try that out with the leftovers that I have this time. Once all of my peppers are stuffed and prepared, I'm gonna work on the sauce that is going to become the gravy. And I'm taking a teaspoon of cornstarch, then I'm going to take a half teaspoon of black bean garlic sauce. Then I'm going to take a teaspoon and a half of oyster sauce. One teaspoon of soy sauce. And then I'm going to add about a half of a cup of water and mix this all together and set this aside till the end. When it's time to cook, I'm going to heat up my pan that has probably about a third of a cup of oil in here. And then I'm going to start adding all of my stuffed peppers and I'm gonna put the fish paste side down. And I have no idea why I was trying to be a hero and I had all of these peppers in with my bare hands. And I was terrified of the oil splattering on me, which it was definitely doing. So after a while I smartened up and I got some tongs and I added all my peppers in. I generally start with the larger and thicker peppers because those will take the longest to cook. And then I'll go in with the smaller peppers and this also makes it easier to have everything fit in the pan because the smaller peppers you can just squeeze into all of the nooks and crannies in between the other peppers. After two or three minutes on the first side, you can start flipping the peppers. And the second side I like to fry for a little longer because I really like for the skin of the peppers to get really nice and blistered in the oil. And I like my peppers a little bit on the softer side as well. So I probably go for about four or five minutes on the second side, but it really depends on the size and the thickness of your peppers. My really thin chili peppers tend to cook pretty quickly because there isn't a lot of meat on the peppers. And the fish paste cooks really quickly as well because we don't have like a super thick amount of it. So just when I start to see that the skins of my peppers are really nice and blistered on the other side and it looks like the peppers have softened, I will start removing the peppers as they're ready. And I just go throughout the pan and especially since your pan might have hot spots and with the different sizes of peppers, I'll start taking out the ones that are ready and any of the ones that are larger or thicker, I will usually leave those for a couple of extra minutes and just remove the ones that are ready as needed. I got a little distracted at this point because I was outside and I noticed that one of our chickens had gotten out of the run and was walking around the garden. So I had to go and fetch her and get her back inside. Excuse me, how did you get out? Get out of my garden. 
But anyway, once I have removed all of the peppers from the pan and they were all done, I usually turn off the heat at this point because whatever residual heat is left is going to be enough to cook our sauce and get it to thicken. So now that the fire is off, I am remixing up all of my sauce ingredients because the cornstarch tends to settle at the bottom. So I always like to make sure it's nice and mixed up before I add it to the pan. Once I add it to the pan, you can see that it is immediately sizzling and thickening up because of that cornstarch. And this is just a really nice, basic, all-purpose Chinese gravy that you can put on a lot of things. I often make this when I am doing like stir fries as well. But on top of these peppers, it is just absolutely divine. And as I pour it on these peppers, isn't that just the most beautiful sight you have ever seen? The sauce is really nice and salty and savory because of the oyster sauce and the black bean garlic sauce. The peppers are beautifully cooked with a nice char and blister on the skins and the fish paste is just the perfect texture. We had this for dinner with some white rice and I also had some leftover kimchi soup that I served with it as well as some spicy stir fried squid and vegetables. So this is definitely kind of like a fusion meal. I have like a very traditional Chinese dish along with some Korean dishes, but it was delicious all together. And if you have never tried this dish before with the peppers and the fish paste, I really recommend for you to try it, especially if you have a lot of peppers at the end of the garden season. For us, we're coming up on the time where we're we're about to pick all of our peppers and this is such a great dish to make because you can use so many different kinds of peppers if you like really spicy peppers you can use all chili peppers but if you don't like spicy peppers you can just use sweet bell peppers but we really love having a mix because you can just hop around and have one pepper and then jump to the next one and it's definitely been one of our favorite things to eat and for me to make in these past couple of weeks it looks like it would be a very complicated dish, but once you break it down into the different steps, it comes together pretty easily. There's not a lot of ingredients and a lot of it can actually be prepped ahead of time as well. You can prepare your fish paste ahead of time or even prepare all of your peppers and stuff them and then just leave them in the fridge until it is time to fry them. So I hope you try this recipe out and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please enjoy some footage of our silly goats living their best lives and enjoying this beautiful fall weather. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you again in the next one. You just cannot make up your mind, can you? No. Oh no, not you. <laughs> not you. Not you. Classic iris. Just give him this face. Eat this face. Eat this.